It's now seven o'clock. Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Santa Fe Independent School District Board of Trustees. We believe it's important this meeting be conducted in an organized and efficient manner. And to that end, we'd like to outline some ground rules for all of us to follow during the course of the evening. First and foremost, you should recognize that this is the board's meeting. By law, most of the discussion and all of the voting must be done in open session, but public participation by necessity must be limited to that part of the agenda that is reserved for public input. Occasionally, the board may seek comment, clarification from an administrator in attendance, or even from someone in the audience. It's the board's prerogative to seek that information from non-board members as it chooses. However, unsolicited participation from the audience is inappropriate. Secondly, at times it may seem that we are voting on issues of importance with little or even no discussion. Please be advised that all board members get a packet of background information about the various subject on tonight's agenda several days in advance of actually coming here to participate in the meeting. After receiving our packets, all board members have and often exercise the opportunity to contact various school administrators to ask specific questions in an effort to better understand the issues on which we are expected to vote. We thank you for being interested in your school district as witnessed by your presence here tonight. We encourage your active participation in the educational process of your children. We appreciate your cooperation in helping us conduct the business of the Santa Fe Independent School District in an organized and civilized manner, and we hope you enjoy the meeting. Okay, Mr. Rothmill, would you lead us in the invocation and our pledges, please? Please bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we start a new school year. <clears throat> we pray that you'll be with our students, teachers, and staff, that you watch over them and keep them safe. Give them the strength to move forward and have a good year. Father, we pray that you be with the board tonight. Give us the knowledge and good judgments to make the right decisions for our district. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless everyone here tonight and give us all a safe journey home. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Stand, please. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas of Okay, do we have any action from our closed session? <clears throat> no, sir. Okay. With that, we will now move into our information items and we'll start with some monthly reports. Yes, sir, we have the five, the average monthly reports available for your review this evening and we also have a couple of updates. We'll start with Dr. Schumann, who will update us on our um, counseling and, and mental health support in our district. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wall. Uh, this summer, uh, pr in preparation for the return of school, we leaned um, on our community partners. And uh, when students returned to school, uh, we had a good plan in place and had support there to ensure that our students' uh, mental health <laughs> needs were met. During the first week of school at Santa Fe High School, um, the following counseling support, um, campus support was there. We had four of our high school counselors, uh, four high school wells, wellness counselors, all of whom are either certified or licensed counselors, and also one licensed specialist in school psychology. Outside agencies that provided additional mental health support included Gulf Coast Centers, Region 4 Educational Service Center, Texas Children's Hospital Trauma and Grief Center, Crisis Intervention Stress Management Team, uh, FBI Victims uh, Assistance, uh, the Resiliency Center, and also we had um, at the high school three comfort dogs. And through this counseling support, uh, collectively um, were logged approximately 150 uh, counseling visits with both students and staff. Counseling on other campuses included uh, two counselors on each of our campuses. There were two licensed specialists in school psychology who were so assigned to provide additional support. And then just in case, we had um, scheduled with our crisis intervention stress management team 
um, the ability for them to contact should they need additional assistance on any of the other campuses and that support was not needed. So as we began um, our first week of school, uh, counseling support was very strong and we continue uh, to plan those counseling availability for students and staff. Any questions for Dr. Schumer? No, ma'am. No, sir. Thank you. So I think Chief Ron will come give us a brief update on safety implementation for the start of school. Good evening. Give you a brief update of where we stand <laughs> with the personnel. Uh, we have two police officer positions, the full-time positions where uh, conditional offers of employment have been made to the last remaining two positions. We're awaiting their, their uh, psychological and medical testing. Should have them on board within the next two weeks. Our last two security guard positions, uh, we're in the interview process for those. We have a sufficient number of applicants now pool left, so we should be filling that within the week. Metal detector operations. Um, we have, we're one week down with it. Monday, like we said, was going to be hard getting everybody accustomed to it. I was pleasantly surprised by Tuesday and later in the week, it significantly decreased the amount of time it took to get the, the kids through the detectors. Uh, as for information that's out there about our operations, I'd like to personally invite Ms. Darnell or any other community leaders that want to come there and see it firsthand so you can be uh, armed with factual information as far as the, uh, what goes on. Uh, last Friday, Ms. Stone took me up on it, was able to see what really goes on there. And uh, it's a learning curve. It's going to take a while for everybody to get used to removing their metal objects and Hopefully by next couple of weeks, it's going to be a steady flow into the building. Any questions? Any questions for Chief? No. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Atkins will do a, uh, give us an update on our progress with our new school and any other projects in the district. How are y'all doing this evening? All right, quick update on the new elementary. Um, the slab is about 50% poured. They're going to pour some more pieces of it to uh, on Thursday. The structural steel arrived last week. They actually started erecting the steel uh, today. Uh, the CMU block for the cafeteria and gyms is uh, going up. If you drive by there, you'll see some vertical walls standing. That's where the uh, new cafeteria and kitchen is going to be. So. Uh, they are on schedule and hitting their milestones. Now that steel's starting to show up, it'll really start looking like a building over the next six weeks to two months. So that project is, is staying on, on, on task. Assuming we don't get a lot of rain this week, then we'll pour concrete on Thursday. So we'll see what, what the little bit we got today does. As far as other projects go, uh, at the high school, we uh, were able to get everything done. We said we would get done before school started. We had the vestibule. Uh, done ready to work like it was designed uh, we're still waiting on the br glass but uh, it is there and functioning as as it will once we put the new br glass in uh, we got the new corridors all completed the counseling offices all constructed and uh, we uh, got the school ready to go in a manner that we had told you that we would and the only way that we could have done it is with the help of Create Architects, which I'd like to bring up, and bring Division them. One and their team, which I'd like to bring up as well, to recognize all their hard work. They took a project that everybody said was impossible and did it in a matter of four weeks. So uh, they really made it happen. So if you'll come up. <laughs> Jerry Bevel. Holly Burns, George Wandanati, Jason is the kind of on-site guy who was the big pusher on the job, uh, Mark Willingham, and Bruce, who was the support behind the scenes. So without these guys, uh, we couldn't have got it done. So they, they really 
made everything happen. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure that everybody recognizes exactly how much work these folks did with no prep time whatsoever. Right. It's, it's amazing. While there's a lot of things that have gone on, that's, this is monumental, what they accomplished in that short a time frame. Yep, it took, uh, it took a lot of uh, discussions and meetings and working together uh, to make it happen. We, we, we had some help with the city permitting as well, but those guys, I mean, they were turning drawings around and uh, getting contractors lined up and, and ha having subs and, and material vendors just provide them everything that necessary to make that job work. So it was, it was definitely a, a lot, of, lot of coordination. Well, I think it's a testament to a lot of people that you got all these things done that we were not anticipating doing, and yet that new school is still on schedule. Yep. yep. That speaks volumes as well. Great team. So, Good. all right. Thank you. And I would like to add to that that uh, the custodian staff and the maintenance staff really stepped up and helped with that. So it was definitely an effort between your team, Bob, and the others. So thank you so very much for your leadership in that role. Okay, next we'll have our quarterly investment report for the fourth quarter. Good evening. I'd like to present the fourth quarter investment report uh, from April 1st through June 30th. If you take a look down under Frost Bank, I'd like to um, explain our uh, bond commercial paper. So we had two um, commercial papers um, mature during the period, one on, <clears throat> excuse me, 418, or two on 418, one for 3 million, one for 7 million, and they earned uh, interest of $48,600, and the other one earned an interest of $130,277.78. We purchased, um, we purchased two commercial papers on 418. Wait a minute, no, I'm doing this wrong here. So the two that matured, one was on 430 and one was on 521. One for 5 million and one for 7.5 million, earning 47,952.78 in interest and 81 to 11. You'll see that on the side there in the last column on the two that matured. Then we purchased two bond commercial papers on 418, one for three million and one for seven million. Uh, one will yield 2.50 in interest and the other is 2.58. Then on 5.2, we purchased uh, another bond commercial paper for three million and that will, and that yield is 2.50 and that'll bring in $42,130.92 in interest. Then we purchased another, or two other bond commercial papers on 525, three million and a two million uh, commercial paper, yielding 2.32 and 2.36, and uh, total interest $23,000. $23.25 and $19,422.22. And then that last one there, we purchased a um, debt service commercial paper, 2.50%, uh, $4 million. That will mature uh, January 24th in time for us to pay our bond payments in February of 2019. And then I'd like to, uh, you to look at the Texas term. We have a certificate of deposit that matured on 822, and we cashed that one out so that we have money to, uh, to make our payments on the new school. And then at Gulf Coast, we had a $2.5 million CD. We reinvested that for six months, and that's at a 2% interest rate. Are there any questions? Any questions, Ms. Junko? No, no, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. 
Okay, next we'll have our Indian Success Academy report. How y'all doing? I appreciate the, uh, the ability to be here and speak to you tonight. Uh, I would actually like to first start by saying a few things, um, not as a Santa Fe ISD employee, but as a resident of Santa Fe, as a Santa Fe graduate, and as a parent of a sixth grader in Santa Fe. Thank you to every member of the board and all of our leadership staff. I could not be more proud to be from Santa Fe and to be led by each and every one of you up here right now. I think your courage, your leadership, your ability to listen uh, and lead this community and school district in, their, in a positive direction, uh, you cannot be told thank you too many times. So I just wanted to tell you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done over the last couple of months. Thank you. Now I'll put the professional hat on. Um, I am the coordinator of the Indian Success Academy. The Indian Success Academy is the alternative learning uh, center program uh, here in the district. Uh, the main role there is to work with our uh, severely at-risk students to help them uh, stay in school, uh, to encourage and continuously motivate them to earn a high school diploma as opposed to dropping out of school uh, which is the direction that most of these students would, would go on. Uh, some of our goals is to decrease the dropout rate for the district and to obviously increase the district's graduation rate. Uh, one of the other things that we do is we partner with College of the Mainland, and so we are working with those students to get them college connected uh, so they will have a bright future once they earn their high school diploma. Uh, I wanted to do a little two-year comparison here. Uh, two years ago in 16-17, we had a total of 65 students that earned uh, credits onto their transcript towards graduation. As opposed to this past year, we increased it to 70 students. Uh, currently, this, this program is capped at 45 students. Uh, so our ability to graduate students and get more kids in there to earn high school uh, credits is, is obviously the goal. Uh, we've been able to do that both years. Uh, and you can see there on the numbers uh, in 2016-17, we had 527 semester-long classes completed that went on transcripts. And last year, even with all of the uh, days that we missed with uh, Harvey and the end of the year, uh, we were able to increase that number up to 586 semester-long credits. The uh, main goal, obviously, is to help these kids get a high school diploma. And in 1617, we had 24 students successfully complete all of their credits and meet the graduation requirements. Last year, we upped that to 42 students. We also had five students enrolled in College of the Mainland certification programs. We had four finish the year there. In 17, 18, we had 10 start the school year uh, as a par part of the college uh, comm certification programs, and five of them finished. Uh, we also had two students graduate uh, with their comm workforce certificate, which is a two year program through College of the Mainland. So we are obviously very happy about that. Uh, to start this school year, we currently have 43 students enrolled in Indian Success Academy. Um, and we have five students who are currently enrolled in College of the Mainland certification uh, courses. I would say uh, our daily attendance is on average about 35 of those 43 show up every, about 35 is, a, is an average on how many of those show up. We have about 30 who are there every single day, and then we have others that we are calling every morning to get them to come, and they are committed to earning their high school diploma. Uh, I dedicate this to them rededicating themselves to earning a high school diploma and seeing that they do have an alternative route to earning uh, their getting credits on their transcript. Um, and obviously, and lastly, 12 of last year's graduates stated that they plan to enlist in the military uh, to go serve our country. So just like to say thank you for your continued support and if you have any questions we'll take them now any questions for Ms. Hubble? yes thank you brother thank you, yeah. thank you Ms. Hubble. okay next we'll have our education foundation annual report
afternoon, evening. I do have board members with me here today, so I want to start by introducing them. Renee Rockers, Paula Heileman, and Jason Tabor all serve on the Education Foundation Board. Um, so the report that you have is the 2017 annual report. We're a little delayed in presenting it, but this is all based on 2017 activities. Um, the foundation started in 2010. Some of you were around then. Some of you have come on board since. Um, just basically, the foundation is here to support the staff for innovation that they want to implement in their classroom. And we enhance and extend the educational services offered by Santa Fe ISD. So in 2017, 195000 um, almost $196,000 was granted to Santa Fe ISD classrooms. And through from 2010 to 2017, we've awarded $685,000 to classrooms for various projects. To highlight some of the projects that we funded in 2017, we did a summer reading camp for all of the elementary students, and that was the first summer reading camp that we've had in a long time. We funded a lot of professional development workshops and STEM, as well as sending teachers to other workshops. We also funded the Science, Technology, Technology Engineering, and Math Lab, and this year that'll be used by fifth grade through eighth grade students. So that's a brief summary of 2017. 2018 has been a difficult year for a lot of people, and the foundation's work are kind of shifted. And so Renee Rockers is going to speak a little bit on the Santa Fe Strong Fund. Good evening, everybody. I'm happy to report that the Santa Fe Strong Fund is a little over a million dollars. So that will go towards um, three categories. One category would be for the deceased families that can apply. The other category is for those that were wounded by gunfire, and then those that were in the art room at the time of the shooting. So those people are um, able to apply for the funds. The deadline to apply is September the 10th, and the deadline for donations will be September the 30th. And we're still receiving funds every single day. Any questions? Any questions for the folks? Thank you. Thank you all very much. Big thank, thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Okay, that does it for our information items. We're going to move into our consent agenda now. Dr. Sir, we have the following items for your consideration and approval on our consent agenda this evening. Our minutes and accounts payable and budget amendments for months and prior months. We have an MOU with Delvin Children's Center, uh, DePelton, excuse me, Children's Center for wellness support at our schools. We have PE waivers, optional flexible school day plan, uh, student transfers, and our TASB unemployment compensation as a renewal of a continuing contract. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We approve the consent agenda as presented. Any questions or comments? If not, would you cast your votes, please? And it has passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will move into our regular agenda. First item is going to be the board goals for 28 2019. Yes, no, would you read them, please? Be happy to. So our board works towards vision and, and direction for the future. The following goals that we'll adopt for, for this current 17-18 school year and then campuses and departments will create specific goals to complete those requirements. So number one, a fiscally responsible district. Number two, dedicated supporting all families at school and at home for lifelong learning success by maintaining ongoing open communications with students, staff, and community. For three, providing instructional leadership and quality professional development for all staff. Number four, are aligned to support students through rigorous curriculum, instruction, and leadership. And number five, create a safe environment for respectful, responsible, and motivated individuals. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve the board goals for 2018-19. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve our goals. Any questions, comments? If not, would you cast your votes, please? And it has passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Ms. Robin, Ms. Talitsky, we got the appraisal roll. Hi, good evening. The Texas Property Tax Code Section 26.01A states, 
By July 25th, the chief appraiser shall prepare and certify to the assessor for each taxing unit participating in the district that part of the appraisal rule for the district that lists the property taxable by the unit. Texas Property Tax Code Section 26.04b states, the assessor shall submit the appraisal roll for the unit showing the total appraised, assessed, and taxable values of all property and the total taxable value of new property to the governing body by the un of the unit by August 1 or as soon thereafter as feasible. By August 1 or as soon thereafter as feasible, the taxing unit's collector shall certify an estimate of the collection rate for the current year to the governing body. Please see the attached 2018 appraisal roll for governing body approval. Also attached are the 2018 certification of anticipated collection rate letter and the 2018 values cer certification letter. All documents are respectfully submitted to the governing body to comply with the requirements set forth by the Texas Property Code. We are asking the board to approve the 2018 appraisal roll and recognize compliance with the Texas Property Tax Code. Mr. President, I make a motion we approve the 2018 appraisal roll and recognize compliance with the Texas Property Tax Code. Second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the appraisal roll. Any other questions or comments? That's not cast your votes, please. And it has passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, next we're going to have uh, approve the order authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of some unlimited tax refunding bonds. Ms. Junko. Consideration and approval of an order authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of Santa Fe Independent School District unlimited tax refunding bonds, series 2018. Authorizing a pricing officer to approve the amount, the interest rates, price, redemption, provisions, and terms thereof, and certain other procedures and provisions related thereto and containing other matters related thereto. Tonight we have John Roebuck and Marcus Dietz here to explain bond refunding. President of the Board, Board Members, Dr. Wall, John Roebuck with BOK Financial Securities. We're your financial advisor. And uh, Marcus Dietz with Oric Harrington Sutcliffe is your bond counsel. Um, he is the one who drafted all the wordy uh, agenda language there for you to read. Um, in your packet, you should have a presentation just like this. Um, we are here tonight to talk to you about a refunding opportunity the district has to save some money. Um, as you recall, refunding basically is taking old debt that has a call date. On the call date, paying those bonds off with new debt has a lower rate and taking advantage of the interest cost differential to create savings for the district. Um, if you'll go to page number one in the presentation, this is the bond buyer index. This is the weekly index of municipal bonds. And it's going to be on the screen or, oh, it's okay. Um, currently, if you look to the far right, the rate is a 3.95%. This is a, a average is done on every Thursday based on a AA, AA2 rated bond with a 20-year average maturity. Uh, the bonds that we're looking to sell to refund uh, some of your outstanding debt is actually a little shorter than that, and we'll have the permit school fund guarantee, which is rated AAA, so higher, so we'll have a lower rate, which is which will take advantage of that interest play there. On, on page two is a summary of the bonds we're looking to refund. We're looking to refund approximately $8.7 I mean $8 million in bonds from the 2010A series and 2011 series. Uh, the average rate, interest rate out there, is about 3.375 to 4.3 on those bonds we're looking to refund, and we hope to come in well below that to generate some savings. And that is shown on page three, and this is the estimated debt service requirements. And we actually ran two different scenarios. This is the structured savings. This actually puts the savings up front in the first couple of years to provide some relief for your tax rate. Uh, we also ran one that's level savings, which you did not include in this. But on the structured savings, we'd have savings of about $565,000, what we're estimating. We hope to come in well above that, but that's what we're conservatively estimating at this point. And then for the level savings, we can probably generate about $650,000, a little more. Uh, it's about $45,000 a year over the next 15 years, so it's a little smaller amounts, uh, but it's, it's an, add them all up, it's more. But uh, if you push it up forward, the savings up front, you, you get a little less savings, but you get more benefit in the first couple of years. And then... To accomplish this on page number four, this is the schedule of events. 
Uh, the first uh, item on this event, the schedule of events, is tonight. We're asking you to approve a parameter order, and that parameter order basically uh, lays out some parameters for us that as long as we hit those parameters, we're going to go to the market, sell these bonds, and then come back to the pricing officer, which is also named in this parameter order, which is actually the president of the board, secretary of the board, Dr. Wall, or Ms. Townsend, who can approve the bond sale on behalf of the district as long as we fall within those parameters. And those parameters are uh, that cannot exceed $10 million in principal amount of the bonds we're refunding, cannot extend the maturity structure past the bonds that we're refunding, and we have to achieve greater than 3% present value savings. And right now, we're, we're well over 5% PV savings, so we're well within that threshold and, and within the parameters. Um, so if you all approve this tonight, we will submit the permit school fund guaranteed application tomorrow, which allows us to have the AAA rating, highest rating possible to sell the bonds, and we'll start working on the offering document. And um, actually, uh, we kind of already started. We thought y'all might want to do this. So we got the document going already. Uh, we'll do rating calls, and then we'll probably price the bonds the week of October 29th, as long as the market is, is solid and good for us, and then close the week of November 26th. And at that point, uh, we'll lock in those savings, and we'll realize those savings on an ongoing basis. And uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer your questions regarding the, the financial side of it. I know Mr. Dietz will love to have, uh, answer your questions regarding the legal side. Uh, but we think this is a great opportunity to save some money for the district. We all like to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Should market conditions uh, improve, does doing this this year preclude us from doing anything, future refunding, anything else for other bonds? For these bonds, uh, the current, the, it's, they're currently callable. So gotcha. after the, the Tax Act of 19, or 2017, excuse me, 2017, uh, we cannot do an advanced refund anymore, so we have to do refunding within 90 days of the call date, and this will fall within that okay. 90 days. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, what's your pleasure? Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the order authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of Santa Fe <laughs> Independent School District Unlimited Tax Refunding Bonds Series 2018, authorizing a price officer to approve the amount, the interest rates, price, redemption provisions, and terms thereof, and certain other procedures and provisions resulted thereto and containing other matters related thereto. Second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve this order authorizing the sale. Any other questions or comments? If not, would you cast your votes, please? And it has passed unanimously. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank, Thank both of you. What is this? Okay. Now we need to uh, talk a little bit about the general fund and fund balance to cover some tax and maintenance. Is that Ms. Junko? In January 2015, the Board of Trustees approved a maintenance tax note in the amount of $1,015,000 to be used to cover the cost of district-wide energy efficient upgrades as recommended by TASB. The maintenance tax note structure is callable in February 2020 for a value of $720,000. If approved by the Board of Trustees in October 2019, the district will have the financial advisor, John Brobuck, and bond counsel, Marcus Dietz, begin the process of repurchasing the callable notes. If the intention is to call the maintenance tax note in February 2020, the district should commit the general fund, fund balance, to report the committed fund balance on the financial statements for the fiscal year 2018-19. The amount saved in the maintenance tax note is call, uh, callable in February 2020 is $93,875. We ask the board to commit to, uh, uh, to approve to commit $720,000 in the general fund fund balance to cover the 2015 callable tax maintenance note in February 2020. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve to commit 720000 in the general fund fund balance to cover the 2015 uh, callable tax maintenance note in February 2020. I second. Callable. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve to commit this money. Let me make sure I understand one thing. We're approving this now. You're not going to spend it now. If something comes up that we 
need to spend some money, we can always go back and change this. Yes. Correct? And it wouldn't be paid. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Now I have to cast your votes, please. And just pass unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Bowers, I think you need a dishwasher at the high school. Yes, sir. Uh, last spring, our, uh, the booster heater attached to our dish machine failed. And um, since then, that means our ladies are doing manual wear washing every day. So um, Stephen Murphy looked into a lot of options. Uh, Hobart no longer supports the booster heater we current that we had. It's 20 years old. And uh, we looked at a lot of different options. And um, we finally came to the conclusion that it would not be a good idea to try and retrofit a different booster heater to the machine we currently have because of the age that it is. So we're asking to replace the machine, which involves um, adding a new 60 amp breaker and um, some custom stainless work to retrofit the tables that surround it. And um, we're asking to spend nutrition service funds in the amount of $33,859 to replace the high school dish machine. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the purchase of a dishwashing machine for the Santa Fe High School from commercial com commercial kitchens at a cost not to exceed $33,859. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we have purchased the dishwashing machine for the high school. Any other questions? Can I cast your votes, please? There'll be some happy lunch ladies and it tomorrow. Passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Cherise, tell them thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And I ain't washing my hands no more. <laughs> okay, Mr. Atkins, I'm going to repair some uh, storm sewer drainage systems. Yes, sir. So, um, over at our high school, we have multiple stormwater inlets that have uh, washed out around uh, the inlets in the grass in different places. And, and we've talked about them in the past in different workshops and stuff as being an ongoing problem. I worked with uh, uh, Kurt Kaminsky on getting us some ideas of best way to long-term repair them and also come up with a plan for repairing them in phases. Um, they, we recommended doing the one first. It was uh, $14,000 uh, initial price and change to repair the one that was uh, also uh, in the concrete. It was a curb inlet and the concrete was started to crack. So we wanted to make sure we didn't do, lose that and wanted to make sure we did that before school started. So we moved forward with that and once we opened it up we realized that not only was a, a stormwater inlet box not properly bedded in cement stabilized sand and, and leaking, but also the pipe that was feeding it, uh, the 42 inch stormwater pipe, wasn't properly bedded either and was cracked. So um, they had to hand excavate that down below the pipe, two feet, pour concrete, encase it in concrete, basically make it a reinforced concrete stormwater pipe for about four feet past the stormwater inlet all the way up to two foot above the pipe and backfill. So the job cost went from a $14,000 repair to a $35,000 repair, which puts us where we are now discussing this as a project. Um, so we need to get that approved. And then at some point we'll have to figure out how to approach repairing the other 10 or so stormwater inlets we have because we'll have to procure those in a different manner moving forward. Any other questions for Mr. Atkins? Uh, Bob, how did you know this was that the underground was messed up? Um, so we, we've got several areas around the water, uh, around the stormwater inlets that, that are, holes have opened up uh, in the grass that, and we'll, we've, we've repaired several of them before in-house. Uh, this one, uh, the concrete was cracking and there was holes opening up in the dirt behind the curb. So we knew it was the same problem we've had before. And part of the problem is, is the way the stormwater flows out of the high school site, it flows underwater into the um, Gulf Coast water canal and so the, there's always water in it. That's why it's something we can't repair in house. We've tried and we have to catch the canal really dry and then we have to catch the rain really weather really dry and so the, we, we just we're, we're not that talented. I was asking this isn't the cause of any previous flooding or anything that we had right? No but uh, we, we are going to uh, go after some mitigation money that's available for through FEMA because we think that it will help mitigate future flooding problems uh, from uh, that, you know, like Harvey and stuff. So it'll help mitigate some of that. Okay. 
And the guys in the back corner have done our new elementary school correctly, right? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah, I've already made sure it's all properly better than <laughs> see that state. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Division One. Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the service reform by Kirsch Kozmowski. I'm sure I messed that up. Incorporate to repair the stormwater drain pipe and inlet at the bus entrance for a cost not to exceed $38,322. Second it. Okay, it's been moved and second that we move forward with these uh, stormwater drain pipe repairs. Any other questions? If not, cast your votes, please. And it has passed unanimously. Thank you, sir. Now I guess we need to get some fencing. Yes, sir. So um, during the uh, security um, walkthrough of the, the different campuses, it was um, identified that uh, some, some additional fencing to help um, with the flow of um, safety or help with safety uh, around different campuses was needed. Um, one of the areas was between the gym and the main building of the junior high. That way the kids could go to the gym and back without having to cross back through metal detectors and such. So we, need some fen we needed some fencing for that. We also wanted some behind the ag shop so that they could open their overhead doors without having a, a breach of the perimeter. Uh, a small piece of fence at Kubitschek, a panic gate at uh, RJ Willem, and then another piece of fence at the high school over by where the construction or geometry and construction will be, which is the old uh, playground on the uh, northeast side of the building. So we uh, are uh, wanting to, you know, get all that fencing in place. Well, most of it's already in place, but we wanted to bring it to you so you knew what we were doing with the, with the fencing we, we've got done. Refresh my memory on that fence that you're gonna put, well, it's actually there, but I don't know if the locking system's all in place yet on those gates behind the egg shop at the high school. How is that all going to be? So uh, two of the gates will be uh, swing gates that are, uh, I think they're 14 foot wide, so, so that they can still get in and out of the overhead doors, and those will be locked with a padlock. And then we put one panic gate that uh, we're going to work, uh, we're going to put a card reader on so that the, <coughs> if you have a badge, you can get in it and access the back of the auditorium. But if you... It has free exit out, and then we also put one of those gates. We'll put uh, over at the high school. I mean, junior high, and it will have a card reader on it as well. The card reader hardware is still to be installed. We're going to put some strikes on there now so that they'll work properly. We've got them uh, locked up right now to keep free access, but uh, they're coming this week to finish those up. And then the electrified pain, uh, devices will be put in over the next few weeks. Any questions? Bob, I promise I'm not picking on you, but. Yeah. This might be the wrong setting for this, but I know a gentleman over at American Fence said he was going to give us a discounted price on this. He did. Uh, we, we, um, we did go through American Fence. This is probably $30,000 worth of fencing that he's offered at um, just over 14000 awesome. I am asking for sixteen, but that's to allow for contingencies, extra footages, because I estimated all my footages off of Google Earth and walking it, and so they could change, so I wanted to allow some flexibility there. Good. Bob, one gate's going to have a padlock on it, right? What's that? Padlock, one yeah. gate, and the other one's going to be a key um, with your badge. Correct. Okay, but they can enter, I mean, they can exit out of it without a key or anything like that on that one gate, but the other gate will stay permanent locked. That's right? correct. That's the correct. Key to it. Yes. But they can get out. They won't be trapped in there. Right. It's free exit. So it's free exit on... Uh, the, there's they actually just can't get in. Both the fences at the high school have free exit, that, and then the fence between the gym and the main junior high have free exit and then we added a free exit gate at uh, RJ for the north playground because that's what they requested the south playground uh, doesn't have gates that they shut or lock and then uh, Kubitschek's playground has a free exit gate as well that we put in already this summer that's part of a plan before all the other security updates regarding that Kubitschek north gate mm -hmm. um, Part of this purchase of the fencing, is that going to be increasing the height around that locking no. door? Because I'm seeing teachers and students go right around right. on the inside. We were going to put a card reader there, and we realized because it's a four-foot fence, the card reader wasn't necessary. They could just open it. So that gate was more, that fence was always there to keep uh, kids from running out. And, uh, so 
if we want to, we can increase the height of that it, moving forward. We haven't really looked at that, but it's not been something that, that we, we've talked about yet. But we can look at increasing the height if we, if we so desire. Any other questions for Mr. Atkins on this one? I make a motion we approve American Fence Supply to provide fencing material and installation to all campuses for a price not to exceed 16500 Second. And moved and second that we approve the uh, fencing uh, purchase with American Fence. Any other questions? All right, would you cast your votes, please? And it has passed unanimously. All right, thank you. All right, now we need to do an easement request for Centerpoint. Yes, sir. So um, we've been through these before whenever we did power. Uh, at the new elementary, um, there will be a run of overhead power lines that will go down along the top of the bank of the detention pond before it reaches our duct bank that will go underground and tie into the transformers located near the uh, northeast por or northwest portion of the building. So what this blanket easement does is it provides center point the rights to go in there and stake the poles where they see is necessary for the proper spacing that they, they require for their poles. Uh, it, it, uh, then we'll go back and survey them in and then go back and do a final easement when we're all done of an aerial easement, just the pathway of the, of the new poles. We've drawn up the pathway. They've drawn it up. It's part of the easement. It's just given them uh, the, the ability to be a little subjective with some of their placement. Mr. President, I make a motion we approve the blanket easement for Centerpoint Energy to provide permanent power to the new William F. Barnett Elementary School. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this easement for Centerpoint. Any questions? Not cast your votes, please. And it has passed unanimously. Thank you, sir. Okay, and we got some cabling installation. Yes, sir. So back in uh, the July uh, 10th board meeting, uh, the board approved a new fire alarm and PA system at the high school. At the time, we, we knew we may need some data cabling to be there to provide IP speakers and some other devices in every classroom for the new PA system. Um, we were hoping we could use existing cabling that was there, but a lot of that is the existing cabling we were counting on was used whenever they went and uh, increased the density of the uh, wireless access points. So what we're asking for now is the funds to go back and actually run the cabling that we knew we'd probably have to run if we couldn't use existing cabling in the, in the ceiling. So uh, this is to run all the speakers in every classroom, and then uh, it'll, the PA system's also going to be uh, provide the active shooter buttons in the classrooms as well. So. Any questions for Ms. Atkins on this one? Sorry. No, go ahead. Does this uh, have to do with the new alarm as well? Yeah, uh, it's not tied to the new fire alarm, but it's it was the same vendor as doing the fire alarm. Okay. But is, is all that in place in the new alarm, or is it still the old sounding alarm? It's still the old alarm. They, they couldn't start until September 7th. Okay, that's right. So I remember yeah. that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Right, what's your pleasure? Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the network cabling solutions to provide network cable installation for the new PA system at the high school for a cost not to exceed $45,645. Second. It's a move and second that we approve the cabling solutions. Any other questions? Yes. Right, cast your votes, please. And it has passed. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Robbins, we got uh, some security cameras. Evening. Kind of feel bad. I'm not even here a month, and I'm asking for money. <laughs> uh, so tonight, I'm I'm coming to you uh, on some a couple of projects that were already uh, kind of in the works when I got here. This is for the cameras throughout the district. Uh, I know the technology staff, the police department, and some of the other staff members on the uh, campuses have been looking at some of the perimeters of the building and some of the, the spots that are, are lacking camera uh, where, where they're able to see what's going on around the building. So we're, we're asking for 44 additional cameras uh, and this is going to be for just the campuses and uh, that's what we're addressing today with, with this proposal. 
and uh, this will be done with the same company that's actually doing our network cabling as well, so we're able to, to get a quicker turnaround on, on getting these cameras up and getting them online as soon as possible. Uh, you have any questions for me as far as, look? I know we discussed some of the locations, but it, this is all for perimeters uh, of, of the buildings, of the campuses. So uh, these cameras are all going to be fed into the new installation that you have for Chief Braun's group to be able to monitor, and that's got plenty of power there as well to support that. Yes, sir. So we have a couple of centralized servers and all this feeds back into that centralized serv uh, uh, system that Chief's uh, personnel, is, they, they've got a beautiful video wall that's able to see multiple cameras right now and uh, all this feeds into the same system so that it, it'll make it very easy for them to be able to view everything. Will this make all of our cameras 360? No, sir. Uh, we, we, we still have a lot of older cameras. This is going to be adding, uh, moving some of the existing uh, fixed cameras that we have, but we are moving to the 360 cameras, and this is all these cameras in here are 360, so we're able to get a, a better view, and, and we get more, uh, more bang for our uh, dollars on that. So that, that will be the procedure that we go moving forward. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, we have over 500. Uh, actually, no, no, Mr. Mr. Robbins. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Robinson, I have a question. On it. Yes, sir. I mean, maybe it's a mistake here or not, but it's talking about audible door alarms as well. Uh, that's the second session. Next okay. item. Yeah. Okay. Well, is, it, is this the next one? Because it says yes, it on the next one. Yes. I, I'm on the camera. I have two but it, sections. But it says tonight. it on here, too. Audible door alarms. One is for cameras, the other one is for the door alarm system. Yeah, I'm reading it wrong on here. It mine's messed up. Because they both they both uh, talking about lock out of a door alarm. They're they're actually both being done by the same company. No, I understand that. Okay. So What's your? Is see looking at the same thing I'm looking at? So right here. It says, so it says ninety-seven thousand. Basically, the question is, for that total cost of ninety-seven thousand, is that inc including door alarms door and? Door. The, in the cameras? No, sir. This that's is just, just cameras. 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 That's, what, that's what we're yes, looking sir. at, right? Yes, sir. The 97000 is just for the cameras, the installation of the cameras, the okay. cabling of the cameras, so there, and the ins... Uh, we just have to reread it. Confused with audible. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, gotcha. It shouldn't say that. Mr. Kelly, did I... Answer no, it's, it's wrong on here. It's wrong on our agenda. Okay. It's on our own. So okay. worded wrong. I understand okay. the confusion then. Okay, so. So the action item would. For the cameras. Yes. Right. Yes. So, I make a motion to approve the network cable solutions to provide cameras. In the high scope of cost, not to exceed ninety-seven thousand two hundred. Is that correct? That it's is correct. For the correct. district. For the what? For the district. For the district. I'm going to say that again if you want okay. me to. Okay. Is that correct? Do you yes. agree with that? That is correct. Statement? Yes. This yes. is just 97,200 for, for the cameras. For the district. Yes, for okay. the district. All right. Okay. It's been, did you get the second, Julie? Yes. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. We approved the uh, camera purchase. Any other questions? Yes. Not. Cast your votes, please. And it has passed. This one's right. Okay, now we have the door alarms. Yes, sir. Uh, hopefully, this one will go a lot better. <laughs> I apologize about that. Uh, so, this section is act is for the actual door alarms, uh, the cabling that will be needed, the the sirens, the alarms, all that uh, is integrated into this solution. This is campus or district wide as well, and this will be to basically piggyback off of what we are to have, but to put it on all the doors that we actually have uh, exterior. So they will notify uh, the people on campus and also those that are off campus that need to be notified when a door is left open, when one's propped open, uh, when 
during a certain time that door is not supposed to open at all. All those things will notify uh, people that need to be notified when that door is open and when there's when there's uh, activity on there, so that they can be redirected. So that'll be a, at that location. There will be an uh, alarm. Correct. Okay. So on on some of your doors will be a automatic alarm. Some of them will be a notification. So there will be timers on those doors. So if if that door they're going out to athletics, obviously we'll we'll want that door to be open. You know during that time. But after that time, that door shouldn't be open, and that will notify uh, local personnel on that campus and also back to Chief's Department to, to let them know as well. Okay. Yes, sir. So, for example, the door that's never being used, as soon as you open it, it'll alarm? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good deal. Any other questions? Yes, this should take care of the concern we had earlier about unattended yes, doors sir. and stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and also, you know, the administration has made it real clear to personnel not to prop door, doors open anymore. I mean, that's, a, that, that's something that we are embedding in, in our uh, folks that we work with to make sure that we're being safe as well. Any other questions? Mr. President, I make a motion we approve network cabling solutions to provide local audio door alarms at selected exterior doors in the high school for a cost not to exceed $34,730. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we uh, do the audible door alarms. Any other questions? Not cash or both, please. And it has passed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right. Thank you, sir. Okay, next we have our contract with Avondale. Ms. Oliver. Good afternoon. Um, Avondale House provides educational services to children with autism. They operate a year-round day school and serve over 60 students from more than 12 different school districts, ranging in ages from 3 to 21. Santa Fe has two students that attend Avondale to receive services in a highly structured environment with staff specially trained to meet the unique needs of students with autism. These services are not available for many other non-public day school in our area. Each year, the students have an annual review and dismissal meeting to evaluate the effectiveness of the out-of-district placement and develop criteria for the return and transition of the students back into the school district. This request is presented to the board for approval because it exceeds the $25,000. I'm asking the board to review and approve the special programs contracted services agreement with Avondale House not to exceed $111,000. Questions from Ms. Oliver? Mr. President, I make a motion we, we review and approve the special programs contracted service agreement with Avondale House not to exceed $111,000. Second it. It had been moved and seconded that we approve the special program contract. Any other questions? All right, cast your votes, please. It has passed. Thank you. Okay, I guess you have another one here with uh, the Service agreement with Galveston Brazoria Cooperative. GBCHDD provides services for our students identified as having an auditory impairment. Students are provided services through support to the district, itinerant students, or a students that attend actually in Clear Creek School District. GBCHDD will bill Santa Fe ISD based on the 2016 snapshot data. Therefore, SFISD will be charged for six itinerant students and one site student at the cost not to exceed $105,000. This request is presented to the board for your approval since it exceeds the $25,000 amount. I'm asking the board to review and approve the shared service arrangement fees for the Galveston Brazoria County Cooperative for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing not to exceed $105,000. Any questions? Mr. President, I make a motion we review and approve the shared service agreement fees with the Galveston Brazoria County Cooperative for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, not to exceed one hundred and five thousand. Second, okay, it's been moved and second that we approve the shared service agreement with the cooperative. Any other questions? No, sir. Cast your vote, please. And it is passed. Thank you. 
Okay, then we have the Harris County Department of Education. Okay. ABS West provides a highly structured environment with specially trained staff to meet the unique needs of students with significant behavioral concerns. Currently, Santa Fe ISD has multiple positions to assist students requiring this level of support to receive a free, appropriate education as recommended by the Admission Review and Dismissal Committee. The request is presented to the board because it exceeds the $25,000 cap. I'm asking the board to review and approve the contract with Harris County Department of Education for four students to attend ABS West, not to exceed $94,000 for the 18-19 school year. Any questions for Ms. Oliver on this one? Mr. President, I make a motion to review and approve the contract with Harris County Department of Education for four students to attend ABS West, not to exceed $94,000 for the 2018-2019 school year. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve this contract with Harris County. Any other questions? I cast your votes, please. And it is passed. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Hansard, we have the uh, student rights and responsibility local. Yes, sir. Mr. Norman, um, the per district policy committee recommendation, we're proposing revisions to policy FNF local um, in order to maintain a safe and disciplined learning environment for our students. And just for clarification, this uh, policy has been revised to um, actually toward our secondary students who are passing through metal detectors and um, however our elementary students are not so the revision needed to be made to specify the students who actually are experiencing those surges on a, on a regular daily basis at those two school campuses so i'm bringing this revision to you um, to approve as as presented Mr. president i make a move that we approve f and f local as presented Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we ap approve this FNF local. Any questions? I right, cast your votes, please. And it's passed. And we have one more. Ms. Answer. Yes, sir. Um, through a district policy committee recommendation, we're proposing policy CA local in order to provide for a stable fund balance reserve. The recommendation is that the reserve for operations shall be accounted for in the committed fund balance and shall maintain a balance equal to 25% of the appropriations for the general fund operations budget. Mr. President, I move that we approve CA local as presented. Second. It's been moved that we approve the CA local. Any questions? If not, cast your votes, please. And it has passed. I think that is all of our regular agenda items. So now we will move into board communication. Ms. Hanser, do you have anything for us tonight? Yes, sir. Mr. Norman and Board of Trustees, I would just like to share with you that we are having a, an assembly um, at the high school tomorrow. Um, we have Bobby Petroselli, who um, is going to present to our high school students. Um, you matter Santa Fe and so our high school students will be going through that assembly but also he is opening up a parent assembly tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium and I encourage you to go if you've not listened to Bobby's message and um, we're requesting that um, as parents and as Bobby has requested that no media uh, will be in that parent meeting. However, um, Bobby will um, go through me if, if there's media that wants to speak to him about his message. Um, so, but I just like to invite everyone to attend that, um, that assembly um, tomorrow evening at the high school auditorium. And then of course, um, football and volleyball has begun. And so uh, you have this little uh, event schedule in front of you so that you can see um, and be able to attend and support our, our students um, this fall in their in their sports in their fine arts and in their academic and extracurricular events and Thank other you, than that that's all I had Ms. Townsend Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who helped us with the uh, student assisted trauma training grant. 
Uh, it was a great effort. Uh, we had about 350, a little over 350 support letters. Um, I'd like to personally thank uh, Mr. Arnell and Mr. Vanderslice, and Mr. Vanderslice and the POP uh, community uh, committee that helped Rosie Stone and her family with the letters. Angela uh, Wisenet helped also to uh, get us uh, some commitment letters. Win uh, Wendy McCowan, we certainly appreciate all your help and your efforts. We did file the grant today, uh, and we're hopeful that we will know the results of the competitive grant uh, by the end of September. Jody Gidley and Kathy Oliver and Sarah Ryan helped us with proofreading the grant, getting the grant pulled together. And Bob Atkins and uh, Kip Robbins helped us as well to look at some of the facts to get them straight for the grant. Our financial advisors reached out and also gave us a letter of support, and we certainly appreciate that. So it was a great effort on everyone's part. Thank you, uh, Mary Ann Jinko and Dr. Schumann, uh, for all that y'all did to pull everything together. So I learned an awful lot from that process, and it was a very rewarding process to go through. So we're hopeful. Uh, just also wanted to say thank you so much to the operations staff for the start of school. Um, it just seems like all the different tri uh, trials and tribulations that we've had in the past, they always step up. And again, it was, it was no different this start of school. The maintenance department just continues to give and give and give, and the custodians are always there doing their part to make sure everything looks nice and is in the proper shape. So we, th we certainly appreciate that. Technology was on the ball, making sure everything was in working order. Nutrition services is always making sure the lunches are ready for the students and transportation uh, did their very best to get the information out. There's lots of areas that we always can improve on, but I just want to say a special shout out to those folks and making it work and getting it going. So thank you so very much. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Snyder. I just want to thank, uh, first of all, Bob and all their, for everything they've done to get school up to where they need to be at. Thank you. And thank you for familiar faces I see in the room. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, League ladies over here, thank y'all. Uh, to the administration and the teachers and support staff, thank y'all. We've got a wonderful school and we're gonna make it through all this and thank y'all for what y'all do. It does not go unnoticed, thank y'all. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Kelly. Well, I think Ms. Townsend covered it all, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll but, go with uh, that. On top of that, uh, creating and Division One, I really thank you guys. I mean, I know that y'all done an amazing job in a short amount of time, and, and, and like we talked about earlier, we're keeping another school on schedule. That's that's a great job. But having kids in this district, I know, uh, especially right now, it's no secret we got our accountability grade, and I can tell you now, with I have a hundred percent confidence in Dr. Wall and her team that it's going to be turned around significantly. And we're learning everything we can now and I, I can't even begin to speak articulate on the fact because it's it's really complicated but you know they can and they know what they're doing and and I have a hundred percent confidence and they'll do what they need to do and chief same as you uh, I know you guys are doing a really good job right now I appreciate everything you guys do and, and all the campuses thank you as well I had the opportunity to take my son some cupcakes Friday and uh, just walking through Kubitschek and just looking in the classroom and looking at these little kids studying and quiet and they were, some of them were on laptops. It was, it, it, it takes you back from where we've been, you know, the last three months, you know, focusing on security and everything. But these kids are here to learn and I'm glad that they're, they're getting what they need to do to do that. But thank everybody for being here. Thank you, sir. Dr. Schumann. Um, I want to thank all of the principals for a smooth start to school. A lot of planning and effort went in, and uh, that included CNI department leaders, our directors um, within the CNI department. And um, because of all of the planning that went in ahead of time, when students showed up last week, things went very smoothly. And um, in addition to that, just uh, giving a thank you to all of our community partners that have helped with the counseling support <coughs> throughout the summer and then this week, helping our students get into school, get back into a routine, um, and providing that mental health support necessary uh, to help them keep moving forward. And so it's been a good week. Mr. Logan. I'd also like to thank everyone for being here and attending tonight. And also, thank y'all for a great smooth start this week. Everything went good. It was a little hectic at first, but it's all working out. Um, CREATE Division One, the maintenance department, thank all y'all for everything y'all did for us to get us up and ready for that first day. Uh, everybody be safe going home.
Ms. Kepka? Well, I just need to repeat what everybody else has already said, but I, I really appreciate the work and the dedication of all of the staff for a, really a smooth start to this new school year. And um, I was on some of the campuses the very first day of school, and I was at the high school. And, and while we fully understand how difficult it had to be for some of our students to come back, it was very um, heartwarming to see how many of the students were so happy to be there with their friends and to see them again. So um, uh, you might say it was kind of bittersweet, but it was a, a nice, smooth start, and I think we're just going to go forward from here, and things are going to go very well. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Ralph, no? I do want to thank everybody, and especially uh, uh, our uh, creation aid and, and uh, the other construction people getting our, our school ready for it. Uh, opening day, I tell you, they had a lot of work to do in such a short period of time. I'm really proud that we got it taken care of. Also, uh, I made the first day of school too, and our metal detectors and stuff was going off several times, and we had to adjust them. And you know, we just need to take a little step back, take a deep breath, work out the bugs, and move forward. Um, <clears throat> I think things are going to get better as as time goes on. This weekend we got a couple of football. I mean, got a football game. Then I'm ready for football. I hope everybody else is too. And um, I thank y'all for being here tonight. And y'all have a safe journey home. Mr. Davenport, I promised a lot of people after the last couple board meetings that I'd keep this one short. So I apologize. Um, but I've been writing notes. Um, the first thing is uh, Mayor Jason Tabor. Wonderful job since you've been uh, put in office. Um, I wish you great success and keep doing what you're doing. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. The, uh, the second thing I want to kind of uh, address is, uh, Mr. Arnell, you kind of mentioned about, you know, keeping the room full, and, um, and I truly believe that. Obviously, we can look around, and uh, there's a little bit less than we have over the summer. That's okay. But then to Chief and Mr. Arnell, that is an exact um, example of what we want to see is working together 100%. You know, Chief, thank you for allowing Rosie to come in and, and also offering for anybody else to come see what's going on in our, our schools. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. And that's what I'll say. Thank you. Keep doing it. Please do. Um, the, uh, the other thing I want to say um, to Mark Kenny, um, last year I had a ton of just phone calls, texts, and everything else about the first week and running late, buses, and everything else. I had one, and it was a miscommunication. So well done to you and your staff. So I appreciate it. Um, the other thing uh, is to the current incumbents and all the new candidates um, looking for uh, November. Um, I wish each and every one of y'all a... Uh, great successful campaign so best of luck to all of y'all um, campus leadership thank you um, I know I kind of s sent out a message to each one of y'all this past week I appreciate y'all responding um, when the time was appropriate um, so thank you for everything y'all have done um, and I will land the plane by saying please be patient with us we are looking at a lot of things um, it's not easy I mean there's there's data and Intel coming from every single angle um, and, and kind of along the same lines that Mr. Kelly was talking about the uh, grading system and everything else. Um, we have not talked about it here tonight, but I can already tell you that things are already in place. Great things are moving forward, um, and we will be making those strides to become um, a better uh, district when it comes to instructions um, and education. With that being said, I hope everyone drives safe going home. Dr. Wall, you have anything? Just, just one, one more thank you to everyone, to parents, to staff, to every, everyone in this community for supporting us and getting us to a good start to our school for our students. And, and I said many, many times, this is important work that we have, taking care of our children and raising our children and educating our children. And it takes all of us working together. So we appreciate that. So thank you. And I'm not about to just repeat everything that's been said. So. <laughs> But really, a big thanks to a lot of folks. There's a lot of work that has taken place 
there's a lot of work still to be done and we will continue to work on that uh, thank you for the information for those of you who don't know we did have a, a budget workshop today and got some budget numbers and some updates on where we stand and some explanation on some things financially because remember one of our responsibilities is to be a physically responsible district and then we did get a, a very preliminary start to looking at what the high school may look like in phase two uh, don't think that in the next month we're going to walk in here and have a proposal to rebuild the high school because that's not going to happen but we do have to look at some things because we made changes and we have to look at the future and uh, so we got a little taste of that tonight just to start looking at what's out there and what may, may be available so in the coming months and years is potentially with some of it we'll be asking for input on some of those things as well with what makes sense and what doesn't make sense but again i want to thank everyone for your continued support your ideas and uh, we will move forward with that i will entertain a motion to adjourn a motion to adjourn second all those in favor raise that hand and we are adjourned thank you <laughs>